Hey everybody, it's Dan, the Get School Dude, with the first ever GitHub-centric tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about a brand new feature of GitHub that provides continuous integration and testing mechanisms called GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions has been in beta for some time, but was just officially released to the public on November 13th, 2019. So I'm recording this in the same week of release, so keep that in mind as we go through this tutorial. Some of the details I show you here may look a little bit different in the future. There is way too much to cover in one video, but today we're going to configure a workflow for our Hello World repo so that anytime you push a branch to your GitHub project, it kicks off testing automatically. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to be working in our Hello World repo, which as you can see has a simple build run workflow where we can make the binary the binary that comes out is called hello and we can run the binary print some options out it also has another form where it takes arguments that's all you really need to know about the project because that's what we're going to configure for testing today now i've already gone to github and added this project under the git school dude namespace and the project's called hello so feel free to explore the project and follow along with the video at home if you'd like now in GitHub terminology, what we just did here, where we did a make and then a run of our system, is considered a workflow. And in order to automate this testing, you can define a workflow in a file in a specific area of the repository itself. For example, if you look under this .github directory, I've created a folder called workflows. And if you look under that, we have one file, nominaltesting.yaml. This is the location where workflows are to be stored if you want them to be configured and used as actions in your GitHub project. As you can see, GitHub uses YAML syntax for their workflow files. And even though there's only one workflow shown here, GitHub actually supports multiple workflow files. We're only going to use one today. Notice that this is a tracked file. If I show git log, you can see when it was created. And that part's important because this means that what gets tested in a workflow can actually be branch specific which is super powerful because topic branches can actually modify how the workflow is tested to suit new capabilities specific to that branch. Let's go ahead and open the file. All workflows must have at least one job under the jobs section. Now the workflow itself is named hello testing and here we've defined that this workflow should be triggered on a push to any branch. You can see that under the job sections we've defined one job that does everything and we've given it the name build and run and this runs on section tells GitHub Actions that this job should run on a Ubuntu latest GitHub runner. Jobs are comprised of steps and each step will execute sequentially, one after the other. What's cool about the steps is that we'll actually get a pass-fail status for each one of these steps. And that information will be displayed nicely in the Actions section of the GitHub project, which I'm about to show you. So to quickly go over the steps we've defined, the first one does some git checkout stuff. I'm going to explain that in detail later. After we've done the checkout, we do the build code step, which is supposed to run make in our workspace. And then we have the nominal run, which will actually run the hello binary. Now, I already said we only have one job here, but it's important to note that if we had multiples, by default, jobs will run in parallel. Now, there's a way to specify that one job depends on another, which would prevent that behavior, but we're not going to get into those details today since this is just an introduction video. Now let's go look at the actions section of the GitHub project page itself. So we're on our git school dude slash hello and you can see this actions button here. Here you're going to see a list of all workflows that are by default sorted chronologically with the newest first. But you can see there's some handy filters here that I absolutely love because it's providing the ability to search for the workflow you're looking for much more quickly. Let's take a look at this top workflow, the one that has failed. Here you can see the exact commit that was tested and a summary of how each step performed, whether it passed or failed. Green check mark for pass, red X for fail. Each one of these steps can be expanded to see the details of them and look at the standard error out associated with those steps if there is any. So for example, the very first one is an internal setup thing that we didn't specify. The next one is our checkout logic that we specified in our YAML file. You can see it doing some get actions here to get to the correct commit and check out the workspace. If I collapse that back down, you can see that the next step is the build code section, which has a green check mark, meaning it passed. 
but the nominal run which comes up next seems to have failed. Now if you were paying close attention to what we looked at in the YAML file you may have noticed that I didn't actually do a make in the build code section. You can see that what actually got run was this. So although we didn't build the hello binary and that's why this failed, you can see no such file or directory, in this build code job, it says it was successful. Why? Well, because what we ran returned zero. So the return code is crucial for each step. If the step returns non-zero, it'll be considered failure, just like it did here. If it returns zero, it'll be considered passing. Now, a little bit of an aside, you can see I do a PWD, a who am I, and just an LS to see what's going on in this workspace after we've checked everything out. You can see that we're actually running as a user called runner and you can see that our working directory is this directory and an ls shows that we now have a working tree which is not shown here but exactly at the commit associated with this execution of the workflow so the next step i'm going to show you is how to fix this so that we're actually doing the build we should see this run failure clear up so let's go ahead and do that Okay, we're in our nominal testing workflow YAML file and we're going to replace the run that we just saw with make so that it actually builds the project. You can see our get status shows that we've made that change. We're on the actions branch. We're going to go ahead and commit this change and push it out. Since I use GitLab in other videos, I have a remote called GitHub and I'm on a topic branch called actions. So this git push command will push out to GitHub on the actions branch. Let's go ahead and execute it. Push is complete. We can now flip over to our actions area and see that we now have one that is pending. It's queued. You can see that it was triggered because of the push and you can see that it was triggered by me. How long ago and how long it's been running. There's a lot of good information in this dashboard view of the workflow. As you can see, it just finished and we can click on it to get more information. Now if we scroll down, we can see all of our check marks are green because on the build code section, make is actually run, which lets the downstream step here actually execute correctly. So we've successfully fixed up the YAML file that controls the testing here. Our workflows are now passing on the actions branch. And I want to point out that you actually don't have to go over here to see this. There's linkage between the branch, the pull request, and the actions themselves. So you can see I have one open pull request here that's associated with the actions branch. This is pull request one. You can see there's a pull request to merge actions into master. And at the bottom you can see a summary of all the checks and you can see that it is passed. At the top here you can see different tabs and if you actually go to the commit section you can see a linkage between the commit itself and the actual workflow status for that commit. Of course the newest one is this one where we fixed up the build. Now that everything's passing, let's go ahead and merge this pull request. Now if we flip back over to the actions tab you can see that the merge actually creates a new commit which automatically is triggering a new test of that merged state. Now in this particular case the actions branch was fast forward ahead of master so it's technically testing the same state of code even though we have a different commit. But here is where you would see a failure if the merge itself produced a state of code that does not pass the testing defined in your workflow files. Now one last thing I want to talk about here. Remember when I mentioned that this action does a git checkout? GitHub's created a pretty unique and cool idea here in providing the ability to share generic actions. That's what this is. This is a generic git checkout action. This is basically saying that for the first step we want to use this shared action for doing a git checkout. And the at v1 means the version of that shared action. So as you can imagine things could change over time. This lets you reference that the action you want is precisely this action. At first this might seem a little bit funky. I mean you might wonder why can't I just do the git commands myself in the run area before I do the make. Well you can but don't. There's no need to reinvent the wheel and most projects can leverage the same git actions, but it's not just git. And that's where we get to this cool part. If you go to the edit section of the workflow file itself, it automatically detects that it's a workflow and you get some more information here. You can see that there's actually an action marketplace where you can leverage not just a git checkout, but all kinds of other shared actions. GitHub also provides some level of certification for some of these actions. 
I assume so that the users will know that an action isn't potentially harmful to the project. All of this is very new, so we'll have to see how it plays out. But this blue check mark essentially means that the action itself was verified by GitHub. This is a really cool idea. And I want to add another generic action right now, so let's go ahead and do it. We're going to add this upload artifact action so that we can actually download the hello binary itself in our workflow view. So if you click on the specific action that you're interested in, and you can click this link to see the full marketplace listing, which gives you some more details. So if I flip over to that tab, you can see the basic usage of it. So essentially all we need to do is add another step where we actually upload the artifact using this syntax. So let's go ahead and go back to our file and edit it in place so that we can do this. So here you can see that we've added a step to use the upload artifact action from the marketplace and we've called it hello artifact and we've given it the path in our workspace of what to upload which is this hello binary. Let's go ahead and commit this change and this will be applied directly to the master branch. Now if we flip over to our actions we can see a new workflow was triggered because we made a commit on the master branch. You can see that before it's run this is what the interface looks like while it's queued and you can actually get the real-time feedback of what's happening as it runs. Here you go, you can see run actions upload artifact and we're not using specific version, we're using uh, the state of their master branch for this shared action. It's uploading the binary hello and if we look up here we can see that we now have a new artifact, we can click on it and actually download a zip file of the artifact. We open it up you can see there it is our hello binary this shared action thing is super cool it's going to provide all kinds of capability that can be shared across the github actions community one last thing to mention github actions provides free testing up to a certain resource limit per month everything i showed you here today was using their free resources and this easily suits most small open source projects but if you're planning to use this capability professionally with a large team and you're going to use a lot of resources you can actually purchase extra runner resource time very similar to the way that GitLab has done this model that's it for this video guys if you're interested in more github action videos be sure to let me know in the comments do me a favor hit that like and subscribe button i'm dan the get school dude and i'll see you guys next time <laughs>